What's up, everybody? So on January 12th, 2024, Kathleen Zellner filed a new motion on behalf of Stephen Avery. Yesterday, on January 13th, 2024, Patch.com posted a new article by John Farrick going over Kathleen Zellner's latest filing. I will link it in the description below. I am also going over Kathleen Zellner's latest filing. I've got the first two parts up. I will link that in the description below as well. Part three is coming soon. But I wanted to go over this article, in particular one part of the article. It talks about, according to Kathleen Zellner, the six ways the judge made mistakes when talking about basic facts in the case, when making decisions on basic facts in the case. Here's what it states. According to Kathleen Zellner, here are the six major errors committed by the judge when it came to messing up the basic facts of the Teresa Halbach murder trial in her August post-conviction ruling. Number one, the judge used Brendan Dassey's confession against Stephen Avery even though the confession was inadmissible in Avery's trial and Avery's trial judge Patrick Willis of Manitowoc said it was unreliable and was contradicted by the evidence. Now, number two, this is a giant one. The judge thought forensic evidence connected Brendan Dassey to the crime. It did not. For a judge that is supposed to be making a decision based on the facts in the case, and to not know that one of the people involved in the case was not forensically linked to the case is absolutely, truly bonkers. There was no evidence that Teresa Halbach was ever in Stephen Avery's trailer, let alone no evidence connecting to Brendan Dassey to any part of any crime scene in this case. No blood, no sweat, no DNA, no nothing. Just his coerced confession. So for a judge, that is supposed to be making a ruling based on the facts in the case. To not know the basic facts of the case is absolutely insane, and perhaps that is one of the reasons why she recused herself. Number three, the judge believed Teresa Hallbach's bones were in Avery's burn barrel. They were not. They were in Bobby Dassey's burn barrel. Again, just basic facts about the case that this judge had absolutely no idea about. She clearly didn't do her homework or clearly didn't care, but to not know the basic information of this case is, is truly, truly bonkers. It's absolutely insane. Number four, the judge believed Bobby Dassey pushed the RAV4 onto the Avery property to help Stephen Avery hide evidence even though it actually resulted in all of the evidence being discovered. Why would you push, if you're trying to help somebody, why would you push something that was used in the crime back onto the property and not just leave it off of the property? Like, just absolutely weird. Like, it's insane. And it continues, in the circuit court's nonsensical conclusion, because these actions could be seen as an effort by Bobby to help Stephen Avery, he cannot be considered a valid third-party Denny suspect. The circuit court failed to exp and then this is what Zellner argued in her Friday filing, the circuit court failed to explain why if Bobby was simply lending a hand to helping his homicidal uncle, he would then become the state's star witness against Stephen Avery. Number five, the judge said we had to demonstrate with absolute certainty that Bobby made all of the searches that were on his computer. She wanted to know if we performed psychological testing on Bobby Dassey like we could force him to be examined. This judge was stating some absolutely weird things. And number six, the judge says we had to demonstrate that Bobby Dassey had the scientific expertise to plant the evidence against Stephen Avery. Wisconsin has no such requirement, and it wouldn't have taken any expertise to plant the evidence. Avery's blood could have been removed with a wet rag from Stephen Avery's sink and dripped it in the vehicle. The electronic devices were burned in Dassey's burn barrel, and then put in Stephen Avery's burn barrel. The bullet could have been from many bullets in Avery's garage. The bullet could have been rubbed in Teresa Hallbach's blood or touched her skin before she was burned. We point out that Bobby was a skilled hunter and had been stalking hunting, burning, and dismembering game for many years while Stephen Avery was locked up for a crime he did not commit. So those six things are giant mistakes that the judge made just when discussing the basic facts of the case. Imagine they got in 
went to trial and got into the deep, nitty-gritty information on this case, this judge would have been completely, completely lost. They do have a new judge now. Hopefully this new judge knows more about the case than this old judge. Like I said, this article is posted in the description below, as well as my parts one and two of going over Kathleen Zellner's latest filing. Part three is coming soon. But let me know what you think of these six things that Kathleen Zellner states are the judge just messing up the basic facts of this case. Let me know. Leave some comments below. I hope you're having a good day and I will see you again soon.